Welcome to this tutorial on MLA formatting. MLA, or Modern Language Association, is a formatting style used in academic writing. Working in the MLA format is a critical part of academic writing in your discipline. It can feel daunting if you're not used to it, but for the most part, it's pretty manageable just by remembering a few rules and knowing where to look when you have questions. This short video is meant to serve as an overview of the MLA format, as well as a review of in-text citations. So why do we use MLA? The most important reason is that so that there is some sort of standard on how to list and cite references in an academic paper. Think about it. If everyone was allowed to make up their own way of citing articles, it would take a lot longer to figure out what was going on, right? MLA is used largely in the humanities and language arts, and this style is meant to reflect that. It allows for all kinds of media sources to be cited. MLA lets everyone create a paper that looks and cites just like the others, making it much easier to locate those resources on your own. MLA formatting minus citations is pretty standard and is often already in place in your word processor software. The general format includes, in the upper left-hand corner of the first page, list your name, instructor's name, course, and the date. Below that, a centered title. All margins at one inch, double-spaced, even the Works Cited page. Each page features the author's name and page number in the upper right-hand corner. Only one space after a period. And finally, an MLA formatted paper will include a Works Cited page at the end of the paper, as well as citations within the body of the paper itself. The citations in the text will correspond with the Works Cited page at the end of the paper. Although in-text citations are one of the last things that one normally works on when writing a paper, we're going to look at them first today, since you encounter them first as a reader. The most important thing to remember about MLA formatting is that there are many places available for guidance. As comfortable as you might be with it, there are always situations that might require looking something up. Don't know how to cite an article with 21 authors? Or how to cite a new chapter that appears in the sixth edition of a book? Don't worry. Not many of us do. The key is to remember which resources are out there and which ones work best for you. We'll get to the Works Cited page in the next video, but first, let's take a look at in-text citations. In-text citations are located in the body of the paper. Each one corresponds with an item on the Works Cited list at the end of the paper. This allows for the reader to follow up on your citations and, if desired, locate that item for themselves. While a reference on the Works Cited page contains the complete bibliographic information of the resource, in-text citations typically just feature the author's last name, unless there's more than one author with the same last name. If there's a relevant portion or section of the work that you're trying to draw specific attention to, include a page number, or in the case of audiovisual files, a timestamp. They can be formatted in a few different ways, so you do have options. If we looked at the first example that we just saw, there are a number of ways that this can be presented. The important thing to remember is to include the author's name and the page number, if necessary, of the content you are citing. If there's more than one work by the same author, or if the author is unknown, include the title as well. Finally, you want to make sure that for every citation that you add to your text, that there is an item on the Works Cited page that corresponds to it. You can't cite something in the paper without it also being present as a citation. That's it for this short video. We'll be back in a few minutes to talk more about citations and the Works Cited list.